and welcome to City Beat, where we share with you Colleyville's news and announcements to keep you informed and involved. I'm Adrian Lothery, and I'll be your host. As you've likely noticed, the city has been focused on improving our primary commercial corridor on State Highway 26. This layered approach includes beautification of medians, constructing towers at gateway locations, and even land purchases along the corridor. Let's head out there and take a look. The city's improvement of State Highway 26 followed TxDOT's reconstruction of the roadway. Decorative street lights were installed in 2020 with median and right-of-way improvements the following year. Over 200 large elm trees were planted in the medians and another 200 ornamental trees were planted in the parkway. There are landscape elements for all seasons. The spring season was welcomed with the blooming of thousands of daffodil bulbs. We're now in phase three of beautification. Here at the intersection of Main Street and State Highway 26, towers are being constructed on the two west corners. The entire Main Street intersection is being improved with landscape walls, hardscape, and landscaping. It's exciting to see the energy take hold, with restaurants like Chick-fil-A and Stonehouse opening nearby. And a new 5,000 square foot Mexican food restaurant is looking to open across the street this spring. For families looking for a night out, Look Cinema's new movie theater location is just up the street. Following improvements here at Main Street, the contractor will be working on the gateway tower elements on the south end of town, as well as at the northern gateway. Improvements to our primary commercial corridor continue with the redevelopment of six acres in the southern gateway area. The city purchased the property at ACUF and 26 and will redevelop the site for new commercial uses. We've had several parties already express interest and we anticipate selling the property later this year. One concept that's been discussed for the development of the property includes dividing into three two-acre parcels. This would be ideal for quick service restaurants. I for one would love to see a Whataburger at that location. The city is committed to having a high quality commercial corridor so our citizens can continue to enjoy an exceptional quality of life. We know living in Colleyville is special and being able to stay in town for your shopping and dining needs is even better. Stay tuned over the next year to see what businesses decide to locate at the Southern Gateway. Senior Center renovations are underway and Lisa, our Parks and Recreation Director, is here to give us an update. So tell me about the final design of the new Senior Center. The Senior Center will be getting a new facelift. So we will be painting the existing brick in addition to putting some rock around the face of it. Um, they will also be getting a new um, entrance into the facility. Okay, so big differences outside. People will notice some things. Um, what's happening on the inside here? In the inside, we'll be getting a complete new uh, reconfiguration. So we will be um, reconfiguring the, the rooms so they're not so long and linear, and so they will be more um, usable for programming for recreation classes and programs. So they'll be more rectangle. Wonderful. So it sounds like more functional space and um, areas for everybody to enjoy. Um, are you thinking that's going to allow you some different flexibility for programming in the future? Definitely. We're really excited because we can offer simultaneous programming. So um, there'll be different dynamics that we can offer at the same time where some youth and some seniors or adult classes at the same time. So uh, we can do a lot with the new, the new facility. That's great. So um, how long do you think this whole process will take? It's going to take about nine to ten months in totality. So um, we're, we're getting started. Um, the demo's underway and uh, we're still we're headed that direction. Great. Okay. And you anticipate to reopen? In January. January 2023. Great. Well, we look forward to a tour of the completed project. I'm sure we'll be having a community open house. Thanks yeah. so much, Lisa. Thank you. We're excited to see these improvements at the Senior Center come to life. It's that time of year where everyone wants to be outdoors and the city has events coming up with something for everyone. Let's visit with Ronnie Orr, Community Relations Manager, to learn more. So we have a lot of spring events coming up. I think the next one is the car show, right? That is correct. It's Saturday, April 23rd, and it's actually right here where we're standing at the south lot of City Hall. Great. Now, what can families expect to see here? They can expect to see probably 400 cars, um, a concert, food trucks, games, giveaways, all sorts of things. 
Sounds like fun. Um, are there any awards for the cars? Yes, so we have awards from best exterior to interior, domestic, all kinds of awards. And last year we started something new where we've highlighted the previous year's winners and we put them in a certain VIP parking spot. So we're gonna keep that tradition alive because it's kind of fun to see who won last year. That's exciting. Yeah. We'll be excited to bring our families back out. Definitely. So what events are going on after the car show? Well, we have a May Plaza concert series and it starts May 1st and it's the first three Sundays of May. And we have everything from a jazz band to a ballet group, so it'll be a lot of fun. Sounds like an opportunity for a Sunday afternoon picnic. Definitely, you can bring your blankets, your picnic chairs, there's gonna be free snacks like always. So four o'clock free, tell all your friends. Sounds like fun. So we can't talk about events in Colleyville for the spring and summer season without talking about our headliner event, Stars and Guitars, in late June. Ronnie, what can you tell us about it? Well, I can tell you that it will be held at City Park, which is right west of City Hall, just where it was last year, and everyone's been anxiously awaiting who is the act going so, to be? Who's it gonna be? Drum roll, Joe Nichols. So Yay, come on down. That's exciting. There's gonna be a lot of updates, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. Bring your family. We can't wait. We'll be there. Fireworks, I assume? Fireworks, the whole shebang. No right. pun intended. All right. <laughs> we look forward to seeing everyone out at the events this spring and summer. If you have any questions about details or times, feel free to check out Colleyville's website on the special events page. Or just call me. The Colleyville Fire Department recently purchased a new training device to allow for lifelike practice of medical treatment. Let's head to the Central Fire Station to learn more from Chief Mark Cantrell. Good morning, Chief. Good morning. Thanks for being here. I'm excited to learn a little bit more about our training simulators. Um, but before we talk about that, can you give us a little insight as to why it's so important for our firefighters to have lots of medical training? Yeah, so one of the most important things that some people may not realize is that it's a majority of the calls that we run. Um, upwards of about 60% of the calls that we run are EMS related. And so it becomes extremely important and it's also an opportunity for us to really make a difference in people's lives. And so your staff is really prepared to respond to just about anything. They um, are obviously certified firefighters, but what other sorts of certifications do they carry? Yeah, so we're required to be paramedics. Uh, we do hire people as EMT basics and send them to paramedic school. But as a part of that requirement is they have ongoing training that they have to complete. And so they do um, lots of training every year to get their hours that they need. But more importantly, we do in-house training to give them really realistic training to help them perform better. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about what we've got here on the table in front of us. So what we have here is a I simulate a reality. And what it is, it's the most advanced cardiac monitoring simulator on the market. And so what it does is it simulates what our cardiac monitor does. We use this monitor on, on almost every call that we run. It gives us real time patient data to help us diagnose and treat our patients. It gives us heart rate. It gives us cardiac rhythm. It gives us blood pressure. It gives us all of the information that we need to diagnose and treat. So what this does is it simulates that. It essentially is a video representation of what the monitor does. Uh, before, when we would run a simulation training, so say a, a mock CPR event, we would have an instructor and it would all be um, verbal uh, commands and verbal information. And so you didn't get that realistic approach to training. What this machine does is it uses two iPads essentially and it gives the instructor the ability to change information into the monitor as the scenario progresses. And so it gives our paramedics real-time data as a part of the simulation. That's pretty incredible training opportunity. Absolutely. And so we just bought one of these, correct? That's correct. Wonderful. And so over time, you anticipate that this will be incorporated into the training routines for all of our staff in the fire department. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just for cardiac events. It's for almost any call that we want to simulate. Uh, but we, we do what we call Mega Code Monday. So on Mondays, they run simulated cardiac events. And so this piece of equipment will get used at least once or twice a week. And I know we can't talk about cardiac events without talking about the really amazing results that your team has had as a result of all of their hard work and training. So share with Colleyville citizens, um, you know, some of the amazing saves that you guys have had. Yeah, so we've had some really incredible save rates. Uh, we had upwards of, you know, 20 people 
over the last two to three years who have walked out of the, successfully walked out of the hospital after a cardiac event. Um, but more importantly, I think we have to realize is it is not only our training and preparedness, but it's our community's effort too. We have community CPR program. Uh, we have access to great medical care in the city of Colleyville. We have access to the hospitals uh, almost on every end of our city with some of the latest and greatest doctors and diagnostic equipment that there is. So it's truly a team effort that, we're, that we have the ability to do this. Well, thanks so much for telling us a little bit about your new cardiac monitoring tools and um, sharing the details with Colleyville citizens. Thank you. That's all for this edition of City Beat. Be sure to stay tuned as we explore news from around Colleyville. I'm Adrienne Lothary, and I'll see you next time.